This is a six horsepower Acadian gas engine. They were manufactured to propel boats. It's a, it's a nautical engine. It is water cooled, meaning the seawater actually keeps it cool, stops it from overheating. Uh, it, so it doesn't have a transmission in it, which means that the engine only goes one way. Which means the prop here that it drives through a shaft, it only goes one way. Now, that's called a head, because we want the boat to go ahead. Now, if we want it to go backwards, we have to turn the shaft the other way. Normally, in a car, you go to R for reverse. In this engine, though, it took a very agile cap to make it go the other way. So what he did, this flywheel would be going around. Now, to make it go the opposite way, he would cut the power to the spark system in this engine. That means there's no more spark going to the engine, so it's going to stop. The flywheel will allow it to stop gradually. As it's coming to a stop, what they would do, when it came up a little bit past 11 o'clock, right about there, they would liven up the electrical circuit again, which means the engine would now go the opposite way. If it goes the opposite way, your boat will go backwards, which means you're now going astern. If you missed it, you'd crash into the jetty and damage your boat. The Acadian engines built in Bridgewater have the circles here. If you see a heart here, that's an Atlantic engine built in Lunenburg. These engines were rated by horsepower mathematically. In reality, this is closer to a 10 horsepower engine. Uh, they found out when this place closed up in the 50s, they done a dynamo dynamometer test on them and they produced more than the 6 horsepower. And I was told that at the time, engines were taxed by their horsepower. Now, that means if you sell a 6 horsepower engine and it's really got 10 horsepower, you're going to save money. So I'm going to tell you it's 6, but it's really 10. So but the government isn't too swift sometimes. So they save quite a bit of money in taxes. To start the engine, you'd have a little bottle there. You'd put some raw gas in here and allow it to be drawn in by the engine, which means you now have gas in there. You would turn on the spark to the igniter. The igniter, which looks like this, is in here, and that provides your spark. There's no spark plug in this engine. It's called an igniter. You would turn the power on from 6-volt batteries, and you would be all ready to go. You would crank this over, and the engine would start, hopefully. The, the spring would return this back in, so it wouldn't hit you when it's flying around. And now you've got the engine gone. You set up your oil here, so that you get so many drops of oil a minute, one or two drops a minute sufficient to lubricate your engine. These grease cups here, you turn them in, about a quarter of a turn, and what that does is two things. It greases your, your, your uh, bearings on your uh, crankshaft, and it also seals them because you don't want to draw engine uh, air into your uh, crankcase because that's what's drawing your gas in. We have a pump right here, and as you can see, the pump goes up and down. What this does is draw water from over the side in through here, past a check valve, out past here, another check valve, and it goes into your, your cavity here for keeping your engine cool, and then it discharges over the side. So you've got hot water coming out over the side here. The exhaust from this boat is a two inch pipe, and if it's going over the side, they just put it over the side. There's no cooling really required there because there'll be enough slop from the water to keep it cool so it won't char your wood on your boat. If it went up through the deck, this would be up here, and you would initially fill this full of water so that the deck wouldn't char around your exhaust. Once you got underway, normally there was enough slop coming over to keep this filled and keep your exhaust cool.